Hey everybody, it's Jochen Hayden here. I'm back with the Desert Wolf versus Weirway Ace War in the Pacific played by email. Scenario 1 with stacking limits. This is the 31st of October 1942 combat replay. I think this is going to be an exciting one. Let's see. Okay, and we're off. And what I'm being told is this turn is going to be pretty exciting. So let's see what happens. Okay, got some Coast Watcher stuff. Again, uh, treat that information with a grain of salt. It's usually not very accurate. Okay, let's see if there's any sub-activity. Oh, here we got something. Oh, yeah. Oh, that thing's done. Yeah, those Mark 14s, when they actually hit, they do a lot of damage, so... Uh, yeah. <laughs> this thing's gonna sink. Here it goes. Oop, come on, come on, come on. Nice! Yeah! Man, the herring is all over today. So, okay, so we had, we fired two more torpedoes at the Norway, one hit and one was a dud. That, I don't know if it's going to sink. Maybe, maybe not. If we hear any sinking sounds later, it's going to be that ship. Good job, Herring, dude. That captain's on it. It did. It sank. Oh, we're back. Man, I, I guess they're coming back for another bombardment. I thought they were out of ammo, but I may have misread the situation. Unless they're coming back with just like a, a partial bombardment. Uh, I don't know. Okay. Oh, here we go. It's on. It's on, guys. It's on. So he was ready to go right now. Okay, here we it's on, dude. The invasion of Tarawa is happening. All right. Man, I didn't think I I knew it was going to be within this week. I didn't think it was going to be within the next couple days, but it's on, dude. Let's see what happens here. All right. So we got we got these guys coming in nice and tight to do some bombardment as we la as we land troops. So far, the casualties during unloading have been pretty low. It's probably because they've got good preparation for this. Man, I, I can't wait to see how that goes down. This will be the first amphibious uh, landing I've observed for the allies as an allied player. Cool. All right, unloading more stuff. And more. It's going to you're going to see a lot of this. Minefield. Wow. I didn't even know there. Look at that! So smart of him to bring in mine layer, mine sweepers. So there was a minefield at, at Tarawa, and Desert Wolf prepared for that, and he brought in mine sweepers, to clear him out. Interesting. Wow! I would have never thought there'd be mines there. Uh oh. Oh, man, bad weather. All right, so it looks like the weather has improved in China, at least, and we're always going to look to hit this hex. Yeah, so he's sweeping it with some fighters. And now Desert Wolf is back to the normal operation where he's sweeping. So it looks like a combination of sweeps and long-range cap. Yeah.
Yep, long range cap and sweeps over Tungi. Okay, so we got some Bettys coming in from Christmas Island in the Indian Ocean, and he's just doing a ground attack on Cocos. Doesn't seem to be that effective. Wow. Some long range uh, recon. There's our bombing. We were expecting this. There we go. Good stuff. Softening him up. Ah, uh, the usual baton. Okay, more bombers coming in here. I think we're going to see an attack this turn. Definitely. Man, a lot of fighters. What is he expecting up here? Okay, more sweeps over Tungi. And here comes our bombing raid. This is what we were looking for. We didn't get this yesterday because of the weather, but no excuses today. Look at the size of this. Weather's not great. It's overcast, so the accuracy will be low, but we get some damage done. And another raid. Very little, very little damage done this turn. Look at it. Look at this. Golly. Hmm. It's just it's non-stop, man. I wonder if he's going to try to attack again. Yeah, not, not getting a lot of bombs on target, though. Yeah, I think that weather is really hurting him today. Ooh. That's a lot of B-17s. I'm going to mush these guys up pretty good. Yeah, look at that. That was a good, good hit. That's really good. I think the Invasion of Tarwa is going to go very well. Excellent preparation here. Alright, okay. Some more sweeps in Burma. Okay, that was a very active AM phase. We should be going into the afternoon phase now and we'll see what happens there. Hmm, Emily. That's the big boy. Or big girl. He's really recon on Darwin, isn't he? And cans. Why? Hmm. Got some bombers coming into this hex. This is the other place that he's trying to break through. Not going to do much to him.
Okay, get some more more softening up going here at Tarawa. And these are these Warhawks appear to be flying long range cap. That's why they're shown on here, but you don't see them in the animation. Wow, look at that. These are good hits. Okay, that's it for the uh, for the air combat today. Now we should be moving into the actual ground combat, which I can't wait to see what goes down at Tarawa. Okay, unloading more and unloading more. Yeah, it's gonna be wild. Okay, here we go. Oh, we gotta get to oh, another bombardment. Oh, we're away. Stop being so cautious, man. This guy's killing me. <clears throat> I just don't get it, man. He needs to just break through already. He's wasting time. Look at that. Their AV went up. He's wasting time. There we go. Thank you, we're away. Thank you. Here we go. He's finally attacking at, at uh, Baton. My guess is he's going to wipe him out right now. Let's find out. Yeah! Well, I don't know why I'm cheering, but... I told you guys. I told you. I knew he only needed to hit him once, and they'd wipe him out. Look at this. All right. Let's, let's speed through this, and we'll be here all day. So he wiped out the entire garrison of Baton. It's done. One attack is all he needed. I've been saying it for a week now that these guys were so badly battered that they would only need a stiff breeze to blow them over. And there you go. Despite the four level, they blow right through. The casualties were very uh, acceptable for what they got. So that is the end of organized resistance on, on, on in the Philippines, basically. So they lasted almost... All the way to November, which is really shocking and very good for for Desert Wolf, and that's one of the benefits of your stacking limits, is that it's so hard for the Japanese player to push through that because if you can equal, if you can match their quantity and quality, then what do they have left? Nothing but a very slow grind, very slow grind. But in this case, we already did what he needed to do to get the Baton Garrison down to nothing, and he blew through. So we're going to see a big uptick in points for the Japanese due to this. So thank you for ending this on, on the Philippines. So we don't have to watch it anymore. It's, ugh, it's over. Yeah, another bombardment attack in Chang Changte area. Not very effective. Oh, okay. So Desert Wolf's going for another attack at Tungi. Does not appear that the Japanese reinforcements got there in time, or if they did, it, it's not all of them. Let's see what happens. Ah, he doesn't break through. Yeah, kind of an even trade here. Yikes! Look at that vehicles lost. Ooh. Yep. Wasn't so good for for the allies. Look at the adjusted here. That was actually pretty bad. A lot of vehicles lost. Well, looks like the allies have been ground to a halt here in Burma. At least at this location. Oh, here we go. Oh, look how weakened these guys are. He's going to take it. He's going to take it right now. You ready? He's got this. Boom. He got him, dude. He wore them down so bad. Yep. Awesome. Awesome. Perfectly executed. Perfectly perfectly prepared. 
The casualties are almost nothing. Look at this. A shock attack onto Atoll with basically no casualties. The only reason the vehicle was destroyed because it fell off the ship as they were unloading it. So all these units were wiped out. Fantastic. Excellently executed. Excellent. Look at that. Look at this. Wiped out. What a great turn. Lots of activity here. Man, that was exciting to watch Tarawa. I knew it was going to go down that way because he did such a great job preparing it. Desert Wolf has a keen eye for detail. All the T's are crossed. All the I's are dotted. Okay, looks like he's upgrading some ships out there. Let's see if we get any reinforcements here. Oh, yep, you're not going to get those guys. Wow, excellent turn. I can't wait to analyze this one. Okay, this was a really fun turn. Lots of activity, and good and bad for Desert Wolf. Let's, we'll go through it. We'll get to all this stuff. Let's do our normal thing first. Start with aircraft losses. Uh, seven for the Allies, five for the Japanese. It looks like uh, a lot of ops losses today for both. Probably due to all the cap that these P-40s are flying, the long-range cap. It's very taxing on the pilots on the aircraft. So it's not surprising to see a lot of ops losses like that. And these Topsies are, are I believe, transport aircraft. So I guess we're always using these to transport supplies or something, and they're just getting lost. So there you go. One wounded, one KIA pilot for uh, Desert Wolf this turn. For the um, army loss points, it was a horrible day for uh, Desert Wolf. He took 452 point loss here. And that's due to the fall of Bataan more than likely. That's the bulk of it. The Japanese only lost 28 points for their army loss points this turn. For ship sunk... We're only showing the Kure Maru as lost this turn, but honestly, it was actually two because we heard a sinking sound twice, one for this ship and one for the AK that the Herring had taken out uh, north of uh, Hokkaido. We'll take a look at that in just a second. So something interesting here is despite the massive increase in points and the fall of Bataan, the Japanese have only gone, gone up 212 points today. To bring your ratio to 1.653 at the end of the at the end of all this here i'm going to show you the tracker and we can talk about why perhaps the japanese only went up 200 points when they inflicted so many lost points on the allies i have some theories okay so let's take a look at the combat report i thought the activity of the herring was pretty interesting so the Herring is up here patrolling Sakhalin because there's resources and oil up here that the Japanese player is going to want to transport back to Japan. So the Herring is positioned up here and did a fantastic job. Sank two ships on one turn and still has some torpedoes left. So, yep, 20 torpedoes left. Let's look at this captain, uh, Lieutenant Commander Johnson. He's no joke, man. Great naval skill, excellent aggression. This is exactly the kind of commander you want in a submarine. Somebody give this guy a medal when he gets back. Good job. And then the last thing I saw in the combat report, which we also did see in the in the animation, was the minefield at Tarawa. Let's see if I can find it in here. Where is it at? Well, 
Darn it. I don't think I'm going to find it right now. There's too much to scroll through. But basically, what I saw was that the AMs that... Let's see. Where are they at? These mi He's got Minesweepers. He's got everything in there. Uh, they, they only swept seven mines. So that means that the actual concentration of mines at Tarawa is probably low. Which leads me to believe that this is probably sub-laid mines at Tarawa. Because they don't carry that many mines to begin with. And... The smaller the minefield that you're sweeping, the smaller the quantity of mines you're going to sweep at any given time. If you have like a 500 mine minefield, your minesweepers can sweep dozens of mines at once. But as you get down into the double digits, single digits, you only sweep single digits per, per go through. So I suspect that these mines at Tarawa are sublaid by the Japanese. Doesn't really matter now. So I looked at the SIGINT report, and I only see one thing that I thought was kind of funny. Radio transmissions at Kwajalein Island. That's up here. It's probably the Japanese screaming for help. Hey, help! Help! Tarawa just fell, and he's coming up the road. Send help! <laughs> That's all I could really see that was anything of note at SIGINT. Even then, who knows what that even meant. But I would, if I was the Japanese, I'd be a little concerned right now down here. So I went through the ops report and the usual stuff in here. Nothing really noteworthy. The only thing I saw that might be worth talking about is the patrol boat Curry Maru. That's the one that we saw up there uh, near Sakhalin. It's definitely reported as sunk by the Japanese, which will absolutely be confirmed. It's 100% in the books. If you see it here, that means the Japanese are actually reporting it and we intercepted that. All right, so let's talk about tactical situation or strategic situation um Weirway is still being hesitant to attack here and i think he's making a mistake because well the fatigue level is coming down but the disruption is still high due to the bombing but you need both of these to be high to really have a good attack and he's waiting too long he needs to go there's nothing that's going to stop him from having a good attack here so Weirway, if you can read me tele telepathically do something. Attack, man. He's weak. And, and, and Desert Wolf knows this too. He knows that if he takes an attack here, it's not going to go well. But I think Warway is being way too cautious right now. And here, I think he should just stop wasting the ammo. Because he's never going to break through here with his half-hearted bombardments and bombing. To break through one of these hexes, you need maximum effort. Like everything you got into one funneled area and if he's gonna do that this is where he needs to do it at there's more money up here for him over here in Burma the situation turned a bit sour for Desert Wolf by my reading uh, he attacked and the, the attack did not go well at all he now has highly fatigued and highly disrupted troops so he cannot continue to press the attack he did not knock down the fort the fort he didn't knock it down at all the Japanese have more troops in the hex now, moved in from here and here. So whatever chance that Desert Wolf had to break through here is probably on hold for a while. So we're back to the long, slow grind of, of bombing and slowly working this down. Now, he can keep the damage at the airfield like this indefinitely with all of his bombers. But it it's going to take a lot more time now to break through here. So we're going to have to look for another way for... Uh, Desert Wolf to get a win and I think the best opportunity here for a win is to force an encirclement of this area here and Kill all of these units in this area if he can do that He can free up all of these troops here and redirect them for an encirclement further down but he needs to reduce this pocket first and Doing breaking through here would have been the easiest way to do that, but that's kind of been stymied by we're away moving troops up so he's gonna have to find another way to encircle these troops and kill them but by my reading that's the best way to make a progress in burma right now is to either break through here or encircle down here and get all these troops and kill them if you look at the hex sides he needs to close up here and all around here and then he can kill these guys in in detail so we'll see what he's going to do. I don't really know. So again, there's no point in really looking at the rest of Australia because there's not much going on here at all. Same as Solomon's. It's pretty quiet. The real activity in the Pacific is going to be over here at Tarawa. And we saw an absolutely 
brilliantly executed uh, Atoll assault on Tarawa. Wurwe had bombers. He had surface combat. He had the amphibious troops set up for success, right? He brought in the right type of troops. He brought in infantry. He brought in a tank regiment. He also brought in naval support right here. Where are they at? This base force? This naval support is crucial to helping unload your troops when you're coming ashore. That's why he got so many of his troops actually onto the ground. Look what he's got here. Tons of troops. Now, if you look at the actual uh, troops remaining on the ships, I saw about 15,000 troops or more in these two task forces last turn. He unloaded like two-thirds of those or more in one turn. That's absolutely fantastic. And he did it without the benefit of those special um, amphibious force headquarters that you would get later in the wars of allies. So he's able to pull off a successful atoll attack without that. It's, even, it's only going to get better for him as time goes on. But Tarawa is now in allied hands. The base is absolutely trash due to what he's done to it prior, but he's already got engineers ashore and more are sure to come. He'll get this base fixed up and start working on improving the port and the airfield. And then he has another springboard to continue on the Macon and further up into the Marshalls. But I still think that Naru might be something that he needs to address sooner than later because it's just a, a hole in his flank, right? And if you want to drive all the way up to through the marshals to end it in a we talk, for example, I really think that you're going to want to secure Naru Island first. So we'll see what he's going to do. I, I don't actually know. Looking around at everything I see here, I don't see anything that indicates where his next direction of, of advance will be. So it'll probably take him a few turns to get Tarawa situated, get get his bearings and then maybe within the next week or so we'll see signs of where he's going next but if it were me i would be looking at naru to reduce that first and then go on to macon but that's me i obviously don't know as much as uh desert wolf does but just really well done at tarawa i'm glad that i read the situation correctly and if i see what i'm seeing now it looks like Desert Wolf is going to start pushing out his submarine patrols a little bit deeper into the Japanese islands here since he's now secured Tarawa and there's no imminent risk of the invasion being stopped. Uh, he can push out his subs a little bit further and just to shield any further troops coming into Macon because that's going to be one of the next objectives if not, if not the next. Uh, he wants to start isolating that and he'll start working on beating this thing up. And maybe he'll even use these R-class battleships over here too. Maybe he's just waiting for a good reason to bring them up. Because these guys are going to do some major damage to whatever they bombard. But we'll wait and see. So that's the turn. Uh, oh, I forgot. We didn't talk about this. Baton finally fell. I've been screaming at we're away for since I've been watching these turns to attack. And just like I predicted, it only took him once. These troops on Bataan were so badly battered that when these guys came through, even with the relatively light force that they had, they were able to wipe out the allies completely. So now there's literally nothing left. I guess you can say that the allies got to November because it is technically November 1st, which is absolutely unheard of. But again, stacky limits come into play here. So that's something that worked in Desert Wolf's favor for the longest time in the Philippines. Plus, he had a very good strategy of supposedly supplying Bataan with, with supplies with submarines, which I never thought to do, but it makes a lot of sense, and it's actually not a bad idea. But yeah, um, Weirwe now owns the Philippines. Now he can take these troops here and move them somewhere else. Where they're going to go, I don't really know, but uh, he'll probably just grab these two bases here soon just for the a couple points that they give you and that'll be it but well done to we away for finishing the job on baton now i don't have to talk about it anymore because I was, I was getting angry at him for not doing it but we got nothing further to discuss the philippines is done 
we don't even need to look at it anymore. Not until later in the campaign when maybe Desert Wolf looks to retake it. So now that's the turn. Put in the comments what you think about what happened here. It's bad what happened here. Um, but great what happened here. So I'm going to end this with a little review of the tracker data. And then we'll, we'll call it a day. One moment. Okay, so here we're looking at some tracker data. And I figured out why the Japanese did not gain that many points today. Uh, despite the amount of uh, points they made on the army loss points. So despite gaining almost 450 some odd points from that, they only gained 212 points overall. And it, I didn't, I don't even know why I didn't think about this, but it was Tarawa. Tarawa is worth 200 points to the Japanese and not that much to the allies. So with the improvements that they put on Tarawa, it raised the value of the base for them more than it was worth for the allies. So when they lose it, they lose those points. So despite killing a ton of troops in Philippines, they lose points from losing Tarawa, and that's why the gain is only 212. I thought it was going to be something supply-related, but then I, when I moused over um, Tarawa in game, I realized it was worth a lot of points to the Japanese. So that's why the points didn't go up. But here is what the tracker... Uh, VP points, VP situation looks like as of the amount of turns that I've been tracking it. And as you can see here, I did I did forget to run the 27th. Oops. But there you go. That's where, where I'm getting all my information about ratios and point losses and all that stuff. So this is one of my favorite screens in Tracker. So I can keep track of every little point gain and loss and why and how. Anyway, that's the turn. Thank you guys so much for watching this. Um, we'll see what happens in the next one. I expect there be a little bit of lull in the action as Desert Wolf kind of puts himself together in the Gilberts and figures out where he's going to go next. And then we're going to have to see what his plan is for Burma now that he got stumped in Tungi. All right, guys, catch you on the next one.